Hello, this video is going to cover slicing our test STL files that you can download off of our website. These three files include our uh, basic vase shape, a snowflake style shape, as well as a vase that features loops. And we're going to cover all the settings you need to watch out for, for when slicing these objects. So for this basic vase shape, you can pretty much change any setting you want as it is a solid core object that slices very well. Here, when you uh, double click the object in Simplify 3D, you can change the object scaling options. So you can increase the scale of the object or you can decrease it. And you can also turn off uniform scaling and change it, uh, its shape. So here we do 150% on the Y axis and you can even change the shape to some degree here. So once you have a, a shape that you like, I'm gonna just uh, make sure I have the correct process here selected. So I'm gonna have the object here selected and make a process and we're gonna click prepare to print. And as you can see here, it slices very well. Uh, here, when you have vase mode or spiralized outer contour mode selected, it slices uh, very well and there's no gaps and, or anything like that. And so now let's take a look at our snowflake object. I'm going to re, uh, make the process again here for Simplify 3D. This is a step you have to do when you're selecting multiple size objects here. And as you can see here, this is a shell and it is not solid core. The walls of the object are not really modeled here. That's why this shape looks uh, so funny here and you can kind of see through it. But this, this kind of a, an object is accepted by our slicing settings. And again, for this model, you can also change its scale as well and pretty much have no adverse effects. So I just made it 150% there. Let's go ahead and hit select to print. And as you can see, this object slices uh, very, very well. Now let's go ahead and select our last vase here, the loops one. So this STL mo model uh, was designed on its side. So we're going to have to rotate it and change some size settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, it'd be nice to flip it on the X axis. So let's go ahead and do that. And that was the incorrect way. So let's go ahead and give it negative 90 degrees and we'll go ahead and press center and arrange. And sometimes depending on your object size, sometimes even hitting center and arrange may not center it. So you may have to even move objects around to be in the center. As you can see here, I'm manually moving the object around. Let's go ahead and make sure we have the correct process selected. So we'll make a new process with loops and we have a five millimeter nozzle on our 10 pro profile. And let's go ahead and hit prepare to print. And at first glance, this does appear to slice very well. So as you can see here, this object seems to slice very well. So at the object's current size, with a five millimeter nozzle, it looks like this piece will print uh, very beautifully. But let's go ahead and say you did not want this object to be this large and we reduced the scale 80% across the board. And now that the object is only uh, 328 millimeters tall, which is uh, around, you know, uh, 330, uh, 33 centimeters, let's go ahead and click prepare to print. As you can see now, all of the loops have disappeared. This is because these loops are now smaller than the nozzle size. So uh, you can use a smaller nozzle on the printer and change the nozzle size here. And well, let's say let's do a three millimeter nozzle. You can still print this object with a five millimeter nozzle on the printer. Because now that we've changed the nozzle size to three millimeters, uh, the slicing software interprets the loops correctly again, and it looks like this would be still a good object to print. But since we have a five millimeter nozzle on the printer, we will have to change some flow rates around. So you can do that here in this uh, interface in Simplify 3D under the extrusion multiplier, we'll make that 1.5, and then we can try running this print. You can also do this in the printer interface under extrude controls, under uh, print status, while a print is running live. So uh, my best advice is just get out there and experiment. 
especially with the nozzle size setting in your slicers because the slicer can only make its best interpretation of your model. So there's just, uh, you need to get out there and kind of experiment with your own models and your own nozzle size settings and your own flow rates and see what works best with the material that you are working with.